Picture this, a dimly lit back room in a glamorous Havana casino. A man hunches over a table, his fingers deftly sorting through stacks of cash. The bills are grimy, marked with the invisible stains of extortion, racketeering, and vice. Yet, as they pass through his hands, they are transformed. The dirty money seemingly vanishes, replaced by crisp, clean bills ready to be funneled through a labyrinth of Swiss bank accounts and shell corporations. This is the artistry of Meyer Lansky, the mob's accountant, the godfather of money laundering. In a world where the mafia's illicit profits flowed like a river of blood, one man had the ingenious idea to build a dam. A dam that would cleanse the money, making it indistinguishable from the glittering lights and clinking chips of the casino floor. Meyer Lansky, a name whispered in both fear and reverence, masterminded a scheme that would change the face of organized crime forever. He turned the very symbol of glamour and excess, the casino, into an elaborate washing machine for the mob's dirty cash. In this documentary, we will peel back the layers of Lansky's enigmatic life and unveil the intricate web of his casino empire. We will explore how he transformed the mafia's money laundering game, creating a blueprint that would be followed for decades to come. Brace yourself for a journey through the glitz, the grime, and the genius of the man who built a money laundering machine that even the law couldn't touch. Welcome to the world of Meyer Lansky, the godfather of money laundering. Meyer Lansky, born Meyer Sukov Lansky in 1902, was far more than just another mobster. He was a visionary, a financial mastermind who understood the power of money and the importance of keeping it clean. Lansky's intelligence, cunning, and financial acumen earned him the respect of the most notorious gangsters of his time, including Lucky Luciano and Bugsy Siegel. While his counterparts were busy with the dirty work of organized crime, Lansky focused on the bigger picture. He saw an opportunity in the glittering world of casinos, a chance to create a system that would legitimize the Mafia's ill-gotten gains. Little did anyone know that this unassuming man, often described as a quiet little guy, would go on to engineer one of the most sophisticated money laundering schemes in history. In the chapters to come, we will unravel the story of Meyer Lansky and his casino empire. We will explore how he rose from the streets of New York to become the Mafia's most trusted financial advisor, and how he used his genius to build a money laundering machine that would leave an indelible mark on the world of organized crime. Born in 1902 in Grodno, Poland, Meyer Lansky's life was a testament to the American dream gone wrong. His family immigrated to the United States in 1911, settling in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. It was here, in the gritty streets of New York, that Lansky first dipped his toes into the criminal underworld. As a young man, Lansky quickly realized that his talents lay not in the brutal violence of the streets, but in the subtle art of numbers and negotiation. He had a sharp mind for business and a knack for spotting opportunities where others saw only obstacles. These skills would serve him well as he navigated the treacherous waters of organized crime. Lansky's path to power was paved by his friendship with Charles Lucky Luciano, one of the most influential gangsters of the era. Together, they formed a formidable partnership, with Luciano overseeing the mob's criminal activities and Lansky managing the financial side of the operation. As Luciano's right-hand man, Lansky played a key role in orchestrating the mob's rise to power. He helped establish the Commission, a governing body that brought order to the chaos of the underworld. Lansky's financial savvy and diplomatic skills were invaluable in this process, as he negotiated truces between warring factions and devised ways to distribute the mob's profits fairly. It was during this period that Lansky earned his nickname, the Mob's Accountant. His ability to manage vast sums of money keep meticulous records, and devise clever schemes to hide the mob's wealth made him indispensable to the organization. Lansky's reputation as a financial wizard grew, and soon he was not just managing the mob's money, but also investing it in legitimate businesses. He had a keen eye for spotting lucrative opportunities, from real estate to oil wells, 
and he used these investments to further expand the mob's empire. As Lansky's influence grew, so did his vision for the future of organized crime. He saw the potential in the burgeoning casino industry, and he knew that if he could find a way to use casinos to launder the mob's money, it would be a game changer. This realization would set Lansky on the path to creating his most enduring legacy, the casino money laundering machine. As the mob's profits soared, Lansky faced a new challenge, how to legitimize the vast sums of dirty money flowing in from illegal activities. He needed a way to wash the cash, to make it appear as though it had been earned through legal means. It was then that Lansky had a stroke of genius. He realized that casinos, with their high volume of cash transactions and lax oversight, were the perfect vehicles for money laundering. Casinos offered an ideal environment for Lansky's scheme. Gamblers often brought in large amounts of cash, which could easily be mixed with the mob's dirty money. Once the funds were in the casino's coffers, they could be skimmed off and funneled through a series of complex transactions, making it nearly impossible to trace their origins. To put his plan into action, Lansky needed to gain control over the casino industry. He set his sights on two key locations. Las Vegas and Cuba. In Las Vegas, Lansky worked behind the scenes, using his connections to influence the development of the city's casinos. He helped finance the construction of the Flamingo, a casino hotel that would become a symbol of the mob's power in the desert oasis. Meanwhile, in Cuba, Lansky found an even more hospitable environment for his money laundering operations. Under the corrupt regime of President Fulgencio Batista, Lansky was able to secure exclusive gambling licenses and build a network of casinos that rivaled anything in Las Vegas. The Havana casinos became a playground for the rich and powerful, and a cash cow for the mob. With Lansky's guidance, the Mafia's grip on the casino industry tightened. They used their influence to ensure that the casinos were staffed with friendly dealers, managers, and pit bosses who would turn a blind eye to their skimming operations. They also used their muscle to keep rival gangs and would-be competitors at bay. As the mob's control over the casinos grew, so did their profits. Millions of dollars poured into the Mafia's coffers, all thanks to Lansky's ingenious money laundering scheme. The casinos had become the ultimate washing machines for dirty cash, and Lansky was the mastermind behind it all. But Lansky's ambitions didn't stop there. He knew that to truly succeed, he needed to create a system that could launder money on an unprecedented scale. He needed to build a machine that could take the mob's dirty profits and churn out clean, untraceable cash. And so, with the casinos under his control, Lansky set out to create the ultimate money laundering operation. At the heart of Lansky's money laundering scheme was the casino skimming operation. This was the process by which the mob siphoned off a portion of the casino's profits before they could be recorded on the books. Lansky's men would intercept the cash as it made its way from the counting rooms to the bank, replacing it with the mob's dirty money. The skimming operation was a well-oiled machine, with each member of the team playing a specific role. There were the runners who collected the cash from the counting rooms, the bagmen who transported the money to safe houses, and the accountants, who kept track of the funds and ensured that the books balanced. Once the dirty money was in the casino's coffers, Lansky's team would begin the process of laundering it. They would mix the mob's cash with the legitimate gambling proceeds, making it impossible to distinguish between the two. This was a crucial step in the laundering process, as it allowed the mob to pass off their illicit gains as legitimate income. To further obscure the trail, Lansky's men would often use the dirty money to purchase chips from the casino. These chips would then be cashed out and the funds deposited into bank accounts, creating the appearance of legitimate gambling winnings. To move the laundered money out of the casinos and into the mob's pockets, Lansky set up a complex network of shell corporations and offshore bank accounts. The funds would be transferred through a series of layered transactions, each one designed to further obscure the money's origins. Lansky was particularly fond of using Swiss bank accounts to stash the mob's money. Switzerland's strict banking secrecy laws made it the perfect place to hide illicit funds. 
Lansky's men would wire the laundered money to these accounts, where it would be safe from the prying eyes of law enforcement. Lansky also used the casinos as a front for the mob's loan sharking operations. High rollers who had run out of luck and cash would be approached by Lansky's men and offered loans at exorbitant interest rates. These loans were, in fact, a way for the mob to lend out their dirty money and have it repaid as clean cash. If a borrower couldn't repay their loan, Lansky's men would seize their assets or use violence to collect the debt. This fear of reprisal ensured a steady stream of income for the mob and further cemented their control over the casino industry. Through this intricate web of skimming, laundering, and loan sharking, Lansky had created a money laundering machine that was the envy of the underworld. But to keep this machine running smoothly, he needed to ensure that his operations were protected from the law. And for that, he turned to his powerful friends in high places. Meyer Lansky's success in Cuba was largely due to his close relationship with the country's dictator, Fulgencio Batista. Batista, who ruled Cuba with an iron fist, was deeply corrupt and more than willing to turn a blind eye to the mob's activities in exchange for a cut of the profits. Lansky cultivated this relationship carefully, showering Batista with gifts and bribes. In return, Batista granted Lansky and his associates exclusive gambling licenses and protection from law enforcement. This arrangement allowed Lansky to operate his Havana casinos with impunity, making them the crown jewels of his money laundering empire. In 1952, Lansky offered then-president of Cuba, Carlos Brio Socarras, a bribe of 250,000 US dollars to step down, so Batista could return to power. Once Batista retook control of the government in a military coup in March 1952, he quickly put gambling back on track. Back in the United States, Lansky also worked to forge alliances with corrupt politicians and law enforcement officials in Las Vegas. He knew that to keep his Las Vegas operations running smoothly, he needed the support of those in power. Lansky used his wealth and influence to buy the loyalty of key figures in the city's government and police force. He also made strategic campaign contributions to politicians who were sympathetic to his cause. In return, these officials would look the other way when it came to the mob's activities in the casinos. With his political connections and the protection they afforded, Lansky's casino empire became virtually untouchable. Law enforcement agencies were hesitant to investigate the casinos too closely, knowing that they risked angering powerful people in the process. This lack of oversight allowed Lansky's money laundering machine to operate at full throttle. Millions of dollars flowed through the casinos each month, with the mob skimming off a significant portion for themselves. The system was so effective that it became the model for money laundering operations around the world. Lansky's political connections also allowed him to expand his empire into new territories. He used his influence to secure gambling licenses in other states and countries, always with the goal of creating new opportunities for money laundering. By the 1950s, Lansky used his money laundering system for income from heroin trade. But even as Lansky's power and wealth grew, he never lost sight of the importance of keeping a low profile. He knew that the key to his success was staying out of the spotlight and avoiding the attention of the law. And so, he continued to operate in the shadows, pulling the strings of his vast criminal enterprise from behind the scenes. Little did Lansky know that his empire was about to face its greatest challenge yet. As the 1950s drew to a close, a new wave of anti-corruption investigations, Cuban Revolution, and the rise of Fidel Castro, who outlawed gambling, would threaten to bring his money laundering machine crashing down. In 1970, Lansky fled to Herzliya Pitua, Israel, to escape federal tax evasion charges in the United States. At the time, Israeli law did not permit the extradition of Israeli citizens, and under the law of return, any Jew may legally settle in the state of Israel and naturalize. The Israeli government reserved discretion to exclude Jews with a criminal past from permanently settling in the country. Two years after his arrival, Lansky was deported back to the U.S. The federal government brought Lansky to trial with the testimony of loan shark Vincent Fat Vinnie Teresa. 
Lansky was acquitted in 1973. Lansky retired in Miami and spent his last 10 years quietly at his home in Miami Beach, Florida, until his death on January 15, 1983. At the time of his death, the FBI believed he left behind over $300 million in hidden bank accounts, but they never found any money. This would be equivalent to $958 million in 2024. But even in the face of this adversity, Lansky's genius and determination would ensure that his legacy would live on, forever changing the face of organized crime. Meyer Lansky's money laundering scheme had a profound impact on the way organized crime operated. By creating a system that could effectively clean the mob's dirty money, Lansky opened up new avenues for criminal enterprises to expand and thrive. Other crime syndicates quickly took notice of Lansky's success and began to emulate his methods. Casinos around the world became hotbeds of money laundering activity, with criminals using them to hide the proceeds of everything from drug trafficking to human smuggling. Lansky's scheme also allowed the mob to infiltrate legitimate businesses more easily. With a steady stream of clean cash at their disposal, crime bosses could invest in everything from real estate to the stock market, further blurring the lines between the underworld and the legitimate business world. Lansky's money laundering machine was truly ahead of its time. The techniques he pioneered, such as layering transactions and using offshore bank accounts, remain staples of money laundering operations to this day. In the decades since Lansky's heyday, money launderers have adapted his methods to suit the digital age. Online casinos, cryptocurrency exchanges, and anonymous shell corporations have all become tools of the trade for modern money launderers. But at their core, these techniques all owe a debt to Lansky's original vision. His understanding of how to exploit the gaps in financial regulation and his ability to create complex networks of transactions set the standard for money launderers around the world. Despite increased regulation and law enforcement scrutiny, casinos remain a popular choice for money launderers. The high volume of cash transactions, the anonymity afforded to players, and the global nature of the industry all make casinos an attractive option for those looking to clean their dirty money. In recent years, there have been numerous high-profile cases of money laundering through casinos. From the Las Vegas Sands Corps, $47 million settlement with the U.S. Department of Justice to the ongoing investigations into British Columbia's casino industry, it's clear that Lansky's legacy lives on. But as law enforcement agencies become more sophisticated in their methods, money launderers have had to adapt. They've turned to new technologies and exploited new loopholes in the system, always staying one step ahead of the authorities. In the end, Lansky's greatest legacy may be the enduring cat-and-mouse game between money launderers and those who seek to stop them. It's a game that has been played out in the shadows of the world's casinos for decades, and one that shows no signs of ending anytime soon. As we reflect on the life and crimes of Meyer Lansky, it's impossible not to be struck by the ingenuity and audacity of his money laundering scheme. His story is a reminder of the power of financial crime and the ongoing battle to combat it. It's a battle that will likely continue as long as there are those who seek to profit from the proceeds of illegal activity. As we have seen, Meyer Lansky's money laundering scheme was a masterpiece of criminal ingenuity. Through his control of the casino industry and his creation of a complex network of financial transactions, Lansky was able to turn the mob's dirty money into clean, untraceable cash. But Lansky's impact extends far beyond the world of organized crime. His money laundering machine set a precedent for financial crime that continues to this day. From the drug cartels of South America to the corrupt oligarchs of the former Soviet Union, criminals around the world have followed in Lansky's footsteps, using his techniques to hide their illicit profits. In many ways, Lansky was a visionary. He saw the potential for casinos to become hubs of money laundering activity long before anyone else. He also understood the importance of political connections and the need to stay one step ahead of law enforcement. These insights have become the foundation of modern money laundering operations. Despite the efforts of law enforcement agencies and regulators, the battle against money laundering in the casino industry is far from over.
as Lansky's story illustrates, the lure of easy money and the protection afforded by corrupt politicians and officials make casinos an irresistible target for financial criminals. In recent years, there have been some significant victories in this fight. Stricter anti-money laundering regulations, such as the USA Patriot Act, have made it harder for criminals to use casinos to clean their dirty money. International cooperation between law enforcement agencies has also led to some high-profile takedowns of money laundering operations. But the criminals are always adapting, finding new ways to exploit the system. As long as there is money to be made from illegal activity, there will be those who seek to use casinos and other financial institutions to hide their profits. As we reflect on the life and crimes of Meyer Lansky, it's hard not to feel a sense of awe at the scale and sophistication of his money laundering operation. Lansky's scheme was a testament to his intelligence, his cunning, and his understanding of the underworld. But it's also important to remember the human cost of Lansky's crimes. The money he laundered was the product of extortion, racketeering, and other illegal activities that inflicted real harm on countless individuals and communities. In the end, perhaps the most fitting legacy for Meyer Lansky is as a cautionary tale. His story is a reminder of the power of greed and the lengths that some will go to in pursuit of wealth and influence. It's also a warning about the dangers of unchecked corruption and the importance of strong financial regulations. As we continue to grapple with the challenges of financial crime in the 21st century, we would do well to remember the lessons of Meyer Lansky's life. His money laundering machine may have been a marvel of criminal engineering, but it was also a reminder of the ongoing battle between those who seek to profit from crime and those who seek to prevent it. It is a battle that will likely continue for generations to come. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this documentary and learned something new. If you want to see more documentaries like this, please subscribe to our channel, The Market Detectives, and share this video with your friends. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. We would love to hear from you. See you next time on The Market Detectives.